Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hahid podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me, um, Omar Ashour. He is an entrepreneur and uh, turned, and he he changed his career. So that's what I'm really interested in finding out because you know there are lots of people in Qatar who want to do lots of different things and they don't know if they should take the next step. So let's find some inspiration from his, from the stuff. So hi, hi, Omar. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank Thanks. you for having me. Well, I'm really good. Thank you for coming to the show. Of course. Pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So uh, name is Omar Ashur. I moved uh, to Qatar in 2011 uh, from the U.S. Um, and my first job here was being uh, a structural engineer, civil engineer in one of the, one of the tallest towers in uh, Doha, the World Trade Center. So, uh, as you know, my whole family is in uh, civil engineering. So when I, when I grew up, you know, it was almost brainwashed into me. Like, oh, Omar, what do you want to do when you grow up? You want to be an engineer like your dad and your uncle yeah. and your aunt and your other it's uncle. It's not even a question. It's like, don't you want to yeah, be an engineer? Yeah, and I'm like, the, I'm the <laughs> eldest grandson. Yeah. So it was just, it's like, yeah, I want to be a civil engineer when I grow up. <laughs> Obviously, engineering uh, is very interesting. And you're from uh, Arab family, so... Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm originally Palestinian, um, uh, born in Jordan. So for me, naturally, I uh, went to Penn State to study civil engineering, and I actually got my master's in structural engineering. Don't ask me why, but I guess so it was an easy those, path. <laughs> during those years, like, did, did you know that, you know, you, you don't really enjoy it that much, or... Or what was it like when you were studying? That's a very good question. So uh, when you were when you're younger, you don't really know unless, you know, some people do know what are they you know, passionate about. For me, I was always good at math, physics, engineering in general. Um, and I was good at it. So it was more about getting a good grade, unfortunately, which, you know, I definitely tell kids these days and never study for the grade or the test always study for the knowledge and, and how to apply it. And that's why going into the path of something that you enjoy is much more meaningful. Because I would study for a test, ace it. You come after one week, you ask me a question, I'm like, what? Uh, I don't <laughs> yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is definitely not the best way to, to have an education. Um, fortunately... Uh, I got into, let's say, got my first job here uh, with a company called Arab Tech, and uh, the World Trade Center now is operated by QP, or QP mm -hmm. is in it, and it was amazing. I mean, coming from Pennsylvania, the cold weather, to wake, you know, going to work every morning with that beautiful Corniche site, being up high, having a lot of different challenges, it was interesting. But for me, I didn't like the part where they they put a ceiling over your head you know here's your role you can't you know steer away from it mm -hmm. and that by itself is not in my nature um i don't like to just focus on things in front of me i like to always broaden my scope my horizon look at how things work so i was always uh learning new things after a while um i realized that being in a corporate structure uh, is not for me mm -hmm. because if the corp if the corp the corporate structure induces growth in mm -hmm. an individual then it's great but if it's a let's say old school mentality where you know you need to have the stripes of honor of how many years of experience uh, that's a big thing for me um, capabilities is not connected to numbers number of years of experience yeah. it's about you know how good you are how much yeah. you want to let's say learn and improve and then you don't even have the incentive to work hard because you know that exactly. that's not going to have a result. Yeah. So at that moment, I decided that um, I was going to join my dad's family. Uh, that's family. family. <laughs> dad's company. My father's company. I'm already in their family, so that's good. Um, and it was a different role because when you work in a, in a family company, you can have different ro roles, right? Different hats. So I was into business development, I was into engineering, and it's also related to civil engineering. Mm -hmm. It was more about uh, uh, consulting for uh, concrete industry and uh, third-party testing, soil investigations, material testing. So it's still related to the construction in this industry. 
And uh, I was involved in marketing and sales and accounting and business development, technical support, all these things. And I loved it. Um, uh, and it was it was something about just growing a business that made me, you know, wake up in the morning doing backflips of uh, off the bed. I wish I can, I, you know, I wish I can do that, but figuratively, I guess. Um, oh, you did figuratively. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, at that at that moment, a um, couple years later, I actually um, get recruited by. Um, uh, Sheikh Faleh bin Nasser for his uh, group of companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called uh, GETP, GETP Group. It's 14 companies, you know, has 700 employees, uh, 100 million riyals in revenue per year. Pretty, Pretty solid cool. role. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for me, uh, I was, um, I would say I was 26, 27 at that time. And to, to be, to have the opportunity to be uh, the CEO of a big company like that, at that age, it was amazing. And uh, I was definitely up for the challenge. I wanted to see what I'm made of. Fortunately, uh, I jumped onto this opportunity and it's it has been one of the best uh, journeys of my life. I've learned so much. I've uh, got into so many different industries, met so many amazing people. We've taken the company to new heights every year. And I worked with, you know, people in my team that uh, I'm proud to call as, you know, colleagues, uh, just seeing their growth. Because for me, that was the most satisfying thing for me is to to take someone that has potential and show them how they can achieve that. But at some point, I have this entrepreneurship, you know, itch in me, and it's more related to starting my own thing. And uh, at that time... I was uh, always thinking of this concept called eButler. And the concept of eButler is to have a platform or an application that covers every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things about entrepreneurs is to find ideas, is to look at something in your life that you want and then try to build it if it's not there. So for me, uh, I, I started going into the entrepreneurship, let's say, networks and scene, and that's related to Cubic, Qatar Business Incubation Center, which is amazing. They have the Lean Startup Program, which takes you to the whole startup methodology and how the Lean Startup method is the best way to identify an idea, really study your customer segment, your value proposition, how to build an MVP, mm-hmm. and really go through that cycle of trying to see which one is the, the most valid idea that you want to test in the market. So at that time, eButler started for the desert. You know, we want to have it small. So e-bu- basically a butler in a house is what a concierge is in a hotel. You know, think uh, Batman and uh, Alfred, right? Alfred is a is a butler. And, you know, Batman worries about fighting bad guys. Alfred w- worries about everything else in his life. Uh, so we wanted to have a virtual digital butler. And it started in the desert. So eButler would provide you with barbecue packages, with camping gear for rent or for sale, desert safaris, kite surfing, uh, any kinds of entertainment in the desert. But soon it... Uh, you know, the idea started becoming, no, I mean, this can be something amazing. Uh, people don't want to download, let's say, 30 different apps on their phone for individual services. Yeah. I mean, you see you see the whole scene of apps going to words, uh, uh, an app for car wash, an app for dry cleaning, an app for maintenance. Yeah, it's really annoying. It, yeah, if you look at your phone, you know, there's prime real estate on there. You, It's not easy for an app to get on there. When is the last time you... You downloaded an, uh, an app, let's say, you know, other other than eButler, hopefully. Other, yes, I did. Actually, I downloaded eButler, um, I think, one or two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. So, I've been using so it since. before that, um, you know, the frequency of you downloading new apps on the phone is actually very low. Yeah. I hate, I hate seeing my phone cluttered. And I yeah. also hate, like, increasing storage. So even though I like yeah. something a lot, I'll try and see if I can... Just go to their website as opposed to going to an app and having to download mm-hmm. an app. Exactly. And even if you hear of an app, 
just the whole friction of trying to go to the app store, downloading it, signing up, that's actually a long process. So what I thought that what makes sense is to have one app that has all the services that you need. Uh, and that's what eButler is. eButler, uh, we've actually launched uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, before I get to that, so let me continue. So eButler started you know, being developed as the app. Mm-hmm. And then I was torn between my current job, which is very you know, amazing, very well paid, uh, you know, having upside, being in a big company. But it's not mine. You know what I mean? It's not my baby. So I actually had to make one of the hardest decisions any uh, aspiring entrepreneur had to make, which is get out of their comfort zone. So I actually resigned from my um, really that sounds crazy. comfortable <laughs> job. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I had to, uh, you know, convince my wife that, uh, you know, just one year, l- let me try this. And if not, I can go back, get a job. Uh, how was that process, though? Like, how was that process of making that decision? It's such it's such a difficult decision because do you want to choose between being really comfortable and, you know, having stability or do you go for something that's not very comfortable but gives you a lot of, you know, challenges and, and uh, like, sparks the, the fun in you? Uh, yeah, exactly. And the, so what, the short answer would be is that you have to be smart about it. So... Uh, don't just quit your job and not figure out, you know, how to survive for the next six months. So you need to strategize. Also, the way to, you know, I didn't resign until I saw the potential of what eButler could become. So I did it part time. You know, it's sleepless nights. I can imagine working after hours. Because um, you were having, you were in a leadership position, so you had yeah. to really. I mean, you were already super busy, and then oh, you had yeah, to take exactly. it on. At the same time. But it didn't feel like work. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship is that when, you, when you're passionate about an idea, you're all about it and you, you want to see it grow. So that was, the, that was the motivation. And when I saw to the point that I can't... Uh, is the mic okay? Yeah, it's okay. No worries. <laughs> so uh, um, that being part-time is not pushing it more. I realized that I needed to let's say, take the next step and be full-time on it. And I was actually dreaming of the day that I would wake up from morning to night and work on eButler. Because that's, that's the impact of, that's the, you know, the true catalyst to get your company from an idea to a, a startup or a, a company. So at that moment, I you know, took the, what they call the leap of faith, right? Because it's hard. And um, resigned um told my wife to trust me <laughs> and she's amazing she she supported me all the way and from that day uh till today it's been it's been a roller coaster ride of uh, highs and lows and it's not you know what uh, the movies say where you you become an entrepreneur and it's amazing and it's exciting there are very exciting moments and there are very tough moments and um uh, the, the, the number one quality uh, for an entrepreneur to have is resilience and grit. Uh, you have no idea how important that is in your entrepreneurship journey. Because we as humans tend to think of um, always having self-doubt. And the whole concept of the black swan, right? The unknown unknown. Uh, let's say uh, if you have a, if you face a problem or you don't know how to get people to download the app, you can think that the world is over. But actually, the solution is there, but you haven't thought about it. So, the, so how do you you know? Let's say you want to um, open up, uh, let's say um, a treasure box, mm-hmm. right? And you don't know where the key is. So you search a part of the beach. Your brain wants you to say that, I mean, forget it. You're never going to find the key. I mean, look how big the beach yeah, is. Yeah. And you just want to quit. It's easier. It's easier to quit. It's easier to quit. But if you actually keep going, eventually you're going to find the solution. And that's the key to success in entrepreneurship is keep pushing until you reach success. 
the number of people that told me, Omar, you're crazy. What are you doing? You're, the economy is in a downturn. You need to hold on to your job. You need to uh, you know, have stable income. eButler is not going to work. How do you have 150 types of services in one app? People are not going to download it. They, you know, be specialized. All this negative attention, uh, negative feedback uh, can demoralize someone. Fortunately, I was able to, you know, block it off somehow and believe in myself and believe in my vision to build this. And, uh, you know, fast forward to where we are now. We have over 65 companies registered with us. So eButler connects you with only reliable service providers, right? Yeah. So we do the hard work of finding, researching and vetting only reliable companies and adding it to the app. And that by itself is hard. Just talking to a big company, getting to the manager in charge, getting to the owner and adding them is a long process. So it was four months of being on the road, meeting companies, getting them to agree to, uh, to be on board was all the effort that was done. And we're still adding, obviously, companies every week. And that's why we launched only last uh, or beginning of the year almost, because we wanted to have a full basket of services with good companies offered to the public yeah and i and i i must say like um i think we met we met two two weeks ago yeah. and you said that you've launched it and i had a phone crack so i mean my my screen was shattered and i'd been putting it off for like months but i hated seeing my phone because i was just like you know this is disgusting i don't want to see it but i didn't you know i didn't have the time to go um so i i i just downloaded the app and i called someone and like I had the option of calling them the same day, the next day, you know, multiple time options. And they came and in 30 minutes, my work was done. And I was Amazing. so impressed. Happy customer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I mean, that that is it's so convenient because I. So just to clarify. Uh, so you booked the service on the app, right? Yeah. That's that's the beauty that you don't have to call someone. You just choose what you want. You book it. And they automatically get a notification. And they confirm the service and they come to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah within the next five, ten minutes after I booked, I got the awesome. service confirmed. I knew my phone was going to be fixed the next day. I felt great. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's, then, that's what we want. I mean, the yeah. experience of helping customers, uh, you know, get back more of their life. You know, people don't want to... I mean, think about the... So this is part of the entrepreneurship experience, right? How do you find a good idea? Is you look at pains and gains, right? So what, what pain I'm trying to relieve for customers? So number one is actually, if you want to find a service, either you have to go to Al Nasser Street, Al Gharafa, find the parking, go to like a million shops. They're probably going to size you up and see how much you want to pay and then give you a price, right? Yeah, definitely. And that takes a long, a long time. So that's a pain. So we wanted to have that experience come to your home. The second thing is finding a reliable company. What do I mean by that? Now, let's say you want any service done. You have to go on Google or you have to go on Facebook or ask your friends and bother. And actually that process, if you, if you think about it, takes a long time. What do I mean by long time? I mean, just to go on Google, to find a company, go to their contact us, get their number, call them, and then get their prices then add them on your contact, send them your location on WhatsApp, and then get their availability. All that for one company, and you don't even know if they're good. There's no reviews. And even if you want to read reviews, that takes time. So imagine that we do all the hard work of only adding trustworthy companies that gives you a quality experience. Mm -hmm. And on under 60 seconds, you click, they already get your uh, number, you get, they get your location. And that's it. You just have to sit back and relax and let them come to you. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's really great. And and it's not just phones. I, I saw your app. It has um, beauty, I think. Yep. Um, yoga, for some really interesting reason, I was, I was really excited to see that because sometimes you just want someone to come to your house and teach you something. Yeah, and it's and, great. You, you know, don't have to go to classes and see exactly. like all these. Because sometimes like when I'm interested in going to like workout classes or something, I'm always embarrassed because I, I don't know how I'm going to be yeah. at, at that workout and there are going to be so many strangers going to see me so it's really nice to know that somebody can, can in the comfort of your yeah. own home we have personal trainers uh, yoga instructors tennis coaches swimming instructors 
and, and, and it's all, uh, and it's actually going to be both. So you can bring it to your home or you can book into a class soon enough. Mm-hmm. So similar to beauty, right? Uh, they can come to your home for home service or you can book an appointment in the salon. Uh, and there's many things. I mean, we have uh, doctors even coming to your house, uh, like at home doc. At home doc is, is partner, uh, partnered up with us. Medi is actually going to be partnered up with us. Yeah. So we're just adding all these amazing service providers for you with the yeah. tap of a button. Who, have the, who also have their own different apps, but now all of them could be under one app, which is, yeah. Yeah, which is Very more convenient. Yeah. So if you look at that, that's a, both a pain I'm trying to relieve and a gain I'm giving for my customers. And that's the recipe for a successful startup or an idea. You know, what is your traction? Are people going to see the value you're adding? Yeah. And I... Always recommend any anybody with an idea, get it out there as soon as possible because you can always stay in your own mind thinking that it's amazing. But unless you build an MVP, which is a minimum viable product and test it in the market to get feedback, that's the validation you want. Yeah. Um, because if I stayed in my own, let's say, drawing board, building an amazing app, two years later, I spent so much time and money and rolled it in the market and nobody liked it. I've wasted so much effort and, mo- and time and resources. So as soon as I thought that there's a need, that's when I launched and tested it out and got feedback and then I started improving. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so eButler now, you know, we have 150 types of services and growing and hopefully, uh, so I wanted to talk about the experience of one of our customers, right? Uh, actually, two two interesting stories. One um, a gentleman got broken down in the street, and the first thing he did was go to a butler to get assistance. And within 15 minutes, we had someone come and help them in the road, and they took care of everything. They fixed his car, they brought it, and like he contacted us and genuinely thanked us. I mean, we really helped him. That's so, you know, <laughs> ever since I got a car, I always have this big fear that, you know, someday, like, this is because it happens to everyone, one day it's going to happen to me. And no, then, no, no, not going, and hopefully then, not. <laughs> inshallah, it doesn't, but, you know, what if, what if, and so, like, every time, like, my, I feel like it's, is it vibrating? And, like, I'm overthinking because I'm like, <laughs> if, I don't want it to stop on the road, so I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to yeah, do yeah. everything. You should ignore the sound, <laughs> yeah. right? It's okay, I'll switch home and it'll go away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so I I've, I've always been worried about this. It's so nice to know that you guys Yeah, we got service. we're we're yeah. there for you. Don't worry, we're always there for you. Um another interesting uh concept. So one lady one uh, lady was testing us, right? So she ordered three different things on a Friday. So obviously on a Friday the service providers usually don't work, but we work, you know, not 24/7, but 7 days a week, let's mm-hmm. say. So we, we saw the three services ordered. I think she wanted cleaning, she wanted uh, her dishwasher repaired, and she had some problems with plumbing. We contacted her, we said, uh, you know, thank you for choosing a butler, and you know, we're, we'll take care of everything for you. And within an hour, we confirmed with three different companies uh, for the next day, someone to fix her dishwasher, someone to clean her house, and someone to fix her plumbing. And she was like, that's, Amazing. It's, mm. No way. It's, it's like your own personal, you know, virtual butler uh, yeah. or, you know, ass, the assistant or whatever you want to call it. And, and that's what we aim to do is to give you that feeling that we're there for you as if we work for you. And the beauty of it is that the price on the app is the same uh, as if you call the service provider. There's no upmark in prices. You know, we have our own business model with the providers for them to add them on the app so for you it just added convenience yeah without yeah. any additional prices uh, and that's something that people really appreciate yeah uh, and, uh, and and like yeah so yeah cool. I, I can see that i talked a lot of you about <laughs> butler but because it's like my baby and i'm you know passionate about it and and that's another thing you need to have passion to get you through the tough times in uh, your entrepreneurship journey. Yeah. So you're, t- you're talking about the tough times. I want to, can you share some of the challenges that you went through and like, just so if our audiences are thinking of, you know, starting something that they're aware of, like what kind oh, yeah. of things come across yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you can deal with them. Okay. I have the perfect story for this. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm 
I'm excited. So, <laughs> not to hear about your challenges. <laughs> <laughs> You're excited to see me uh, be miserable? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, before my launch, there was a critical uh, functionality that I needed in the app. And the app is developed by a company in India, um, which they're very good. And I wanted them to do something different, like something extra for the app to be functional. Because if, if not, I wouldn't have been able to launch. And they were the only people who can really like solve this issue. I contacted them, no response. I'm like, okay. Contacted them again. Uh, someone answered me and uh, said that, yeah, give us a couple of days. We'll get back to you with the pricing because, you know, I have to pay to for them to add the uh, functionality. At that time, I didn't have an in-house developer. Mm-hmm. And, okay, I said, okay. And then again, um, waited, nothing happens. And I'm like, you know, I'm freaking out. All my hard work, all the money I put in, all the effort, and I can't even launch. It was so, it was so tough. Kept going back and forth. Every time, um, they had an excuse. Uh, they had a public holiday. And then when they wanted to really, you know, I said, I'm almost begging them to help me. And the day that they were supposed to send me the quotation, all of a sudden they, they got hacked and they have all these problems. And like the guy is just, you know, taking me to a ride. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, you know, agonizing. And all my friends know, all my family knows, and I'm really in a low spot because I felt like it's over. I mean, I, if I can't do this, it's what's my solution, right? Yeah. I, because I couldn't see it. So fortunately, um, my, uh, you know, my mother knows some people in Qatar University. And she said, well, you know, there's this really talented uh, developer he has a PhD in computer science and telecommunication. Uh, his name is uh, Saif Dean, Dr. Saif Dean, because uh, he has a PhD. <laughs> he will help you. You know, he will at least try to fig- see the code and excuse me, and you know, try to f- figure out how to help you. So I go to him, and after our first meeting, and I go, "Where have you been all my life? I'm looking for a co-founder like you, because." I needed uh, a partner who's very tech savvy. And unfortunately, Doha, sometimes you can't find these people. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know, thank you for helping me. But, you know, I want you to be on board. I want you to join my team. So obviously, I, I sold him the vision of eButler. And he goes, yeah, Omar, I, I can see the potential. I can see how much value you can add to people's lives. Let's do it. So while he was... You know, figuring out the the code, uh, the 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 Indian company finally, you know, there. answered me, and of course they put a huge bill because they sense I'm desperate, <laughs> so I had to pay a, a premium, and they did the they did the functionality, and the the moral of the story is that keep pushing because if I gave up, I wouldn't have gotten to seek help from family and friends, I wouldn't have met. My co-founder now, Saif Dean, and we wouldn't have been where we are now. Mm-hmm. So sometimes adversity and difficulties can lead to a lot of you know good. So just just keep, you know keep grinding, and eventually uh, you know when they say when you're going through hell, keep going. Eventually you're gonna get out, right? So yeah. So that that's my story of you know how close I got to not even launching my app. And just, you know, giving up. I'm just waiting for your TED Talk to come out. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully, inshallah. I, inshallah I, I, TED, soon, yeah. Uh, TED Talk. I'm, um, that's actually one of the things that I want to... I've been inspired by, when I was younger, by, let's say, life coaches and motivational speakers. And that's something that I've always, you know, uh, hope that I would some, somehow become someone who can help other people achieve their full potential. And believe in themselves. Yeah. So hey, maybe maybe I like to dream big, and hey, hopefully TED Talk would be my uh, yeah my or you ultimate start goal. Start your own motivational podcast. 
<laughs> yeah. I, hey, I don't. I, I'm not. Since I don't know if I'm good. you're an entrepreneur, you can yeah, do all of yeah, these yeah. new Ho- things. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I can inspire others to to pursue their dreams. Yeah. And uh, I guess build their own startup. True. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Uh, pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for having no me. Worries. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact him. Um, do you want to give your anything? Uh, yes. So uh, my uh, email is omar at e-butler.com. So O-M-A-R at e-butler, B-U-T-L-E-R.com. You can also... Obviously, check our website and uh, our Instagram is eButlerQA. Yeah, and don't forget to um, download their app. They're great. Thank you guys um, for, for listening and have a great week. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.